Hello there, this is Jesse Coffee. It was very stormy today, so I have to film this uh, with the light turned on, my uh, the flashlight on my phone. Uh, so I will be, um, I will tell you my other things. I actually got a new charger for my phone. It's right down there. And, uh, or maybe I'll just, uh, it's, uh, connected to my computer in case I want to do some later editing and mixing, uh, to get it just right. In this update, I have one DVD and some books. Uh, five, to be exact. So, let's get on with the show. Here's a DVD I, uh, first time in the update, it's the DVD. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation with Chevy Chase. You'll crack up. All the tradition in my house, and this is a uh, Warner Home Video release from 1997, I believe. Yep, 1997. And it's got the uh, production notes and four theatrical trailers on there. It's the uh, open magnet. Uh, uh, release, full screen one, open Mac release, and, uh, uh, it's, uh, got the, uh, gray label with invisible ink, which was pretty common on early single-sided Warner discs. Here are the chapter stops in there, along with the stream improvement purchase tabs on the inside. This, I believe, was one of the first Warner DVDs to have its own uh, little menu. And I think this is the only DVD and possibly the only digital release of this film to have the original Warner Brothers logo on it. One with the uh, Warner Communications byline uh, without the Presents tag. Warner uh, Brothers tends to be hit or miss as far as preserving logos. They will either... Uh, they'll either preserve the original logo uh, on their uh, stuff, or they will replace it with uh, whatever logo was current at the time that the film got remastered. This one uses the original Warner Brothers logo on it. Uh, and I have the 2003 DVD of it, which has the then-current... Warner Brothers Pictures logo with the AOL Time Warner byline. And, uh... This is a, uh... Yeah, it's a 1997 desk. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, here's a, uh, uh, anyway, I bought this one because, uh, um, I, uh, my old 2003 DVD of it, which I still have, um, is, uh, all being scratched up by now, I'm pretty sure, so. Here are some, now on to the books, and, um, first two of these, I believe, are self-published. First one is Mega Fails, the hilariously funny book of humorous blunders and misadventures by uh, Adam Douglas. This is uh, from a year that itself was a Mega Fail. Oh, let me get to it. Twenty twenty. Now here is Italian for Beginners, the um, 
complete crash course to speaking Italian in five days or, or less. And it doesn't say it on the, uh, it doesn't say on the inside. Oh, well, it does say, it doesn't say on the outside, but if you go inside, it's by, it turns out to be by, uh, Bruno Thomas and Gianni Nuki, and it was published in, uh, 2021. So you may have to wonder whether they or not they were running on a certain Pixar movie. Uh, well, it might give you time to think of, um, of uh, to think to yourself. Uh, were they trying to cash in on a certain Pixar movie about you know group a group of people in Italy, a couple of whom turn out to be sea monsters, and all of them. Uh, in some sort of bike race. Uh, now here is um, a, a book. Uh, well, I'll read it for. I'll, I'll try reading it for myself to see if that's the case. But <laughs> yep, <yeah, laughs> I can't help but notice the timing. Anyway, here's a, a Dover language guide entry. Easy Italian phrase book. Over 700 phrases for everyday use. This is a uh, book originally published in 1957, subsequently revised in 1986 and 1994, and for, uh, published in 2020. And uh, I know Dover, public, Dover publications from... Um, uh, from older books that my mom has, I, I didn't know they were still around. Printed in USA. And here's one. 101 classic Jewish jokes. Jewish humor from, um, Groucho Marx and Jerry Seifel, including how to tell a Jewish joke, a glossary of Jewish terms, classic one-liners, essays on great Jewish comedians, and much more. By Robert Mention, illustrated by Joe Cole. This was published by Mundstein Publishing out of Memphis. And, um, well, it doesn't say it up there, but it says it down here. It's from 1997. I find it interesting that the most uh, recent comedian excerpted in the book is on the autism spectrum. Now, here's a big one if you're into uh, um, uh, hearing about and talking about current events online. World Almanac and Book of Facts 2023. With 2022 election results. Well, the ones that were current prior to its public ones that were current public prior to its publication anyway. And here is the year in pictures for 2022. Well, from, from between December 2021 and uh, uh, late October or early November 2022, anyway. Here's uh, the time of transition. Uh, German Chancellor Angela Merkel was succeeded by Olaf Scholz December 8th, 2021, after 16 years in office, leading some Germans to um, lead you to a chance of, uh, do you want to build a snowman from, um, uh, Frozen, I would presume. <laughs> Here's a COVID convoy. Um, truck drivers rallied January to February 2022 in Ottawa, Canada, and elsewhere in protest of the country's COVID-19 related public health rules and mandates. Uh, succeeding only in winning condemnation from 85% of the truckers on the road in Canada, uh, all of whom were fully vaccinated, uh, also winning condemnation from the Canadian Trucker Alliance, various labor groups, anyone who has sanity and heart, and um, uh, also... Um, oh, and also, also only succeeding in spawning... A meme out of outsider country musicians, uh, Grant McDonald's Ode to Gay Cowboys, which was titled Ram Ranch. 
in which he originally published in 2012. Um, pressing need. After more than seven years of uh, conflict and a ton of 2022 truce, more than 23.4 million Yemenis depended on depended on humanitarian assistance to survive. Seeking refuge, millions of Ukrainians fled their left their homes to find safety after Russia's large-scale invasion that began February 24, 2022. Uh, six, and, um, now I'm gonna raise the Ukrainian flag. Yep, I am definitely opposed to Russia's invasion of this country. And, uh, if you wanna... I'm gonna do it. Here's the flag that I scored while I was... The little Ukrainian flag that I scored after I, um... After I, uh, participated in the, uh... Little ant, uh, little rally protesting the evasion, and um... okay, I'll put that back now. Oh, God. Uh, Fernand Barman Marcos Jr. was sworn in as president of the Philippines June 30th, 2022. 36 years after his dictator father was ousted. And... The Marcos family was a horrible political dynasty. The worst I can think of um, in the world. I have no idea why anyone thought it would be a good idea to put them back in power again. Oh, well, any faction of the Marcos dynasty, that is. Whose house? Anti-government protesters um, took control of the presidential palace in Colombo, Sri Lanka on July 9, 2022, documenting the takeover with selfies following days of unrest and fitful violence. Malinkert Boris, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson, uh, tendered his resignation on June 7, 2022. Met calls for his departure over repeated ethics scandals. He was replaced by Liz Truss, September 6, 2022. And uh, then UK politics has been uh, pretty damn messy ever since. <laughs> Uh, being assassinated. Um, Japan's former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe was shot dead on July uh, 8, 2022 while appearing at a campaign rally. Too damn hot. Uh, much of Europe uh, wilted under record heat in summer 2022, causing droughts and widespread health risks. And here's a picture of some people in, I'm pretty sure, Gay Paris! Having a nice cool down near the water fountain. Uh, after ensuring at least one day of uh, brutal heat. <laughs> Hope they stayed cool out there. Here's a terror strike. U.S. claimed responsibility for a drone strike July 31st, 2022. That killed Al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zawari. A picture that left with Osama bin Laden. 1998 in Afghanistan. And uh, Deputy President uh, William Ruto was declared the victor of the Kenyan presidential election held in August 2022, despite of allegations of vote rigging and a split electoral commission. Hmm. I just said the UK politics have gotten messy since uh, um, September 2022. Um, African politics have been messy for quite a long time than that. Though, thankfully, none are of the racist variety now, at least. Uh, but the politics in uh, a lot of African countries remain pretty messy. <laughs> Despite the thankful end of apartheid. 
for instance. Uh, feeding need. Family struggle to find baby formula. The only food option for hundreds of thousands of infants. In 2022, due to a nationwide shortage, uh, some sought supplies from contacts on social networks. Say anything? Rights groups opposed a surge of new state laws aimed at restricting LGBTQ rights, including Florida's Don't Say Gay Bill, signed March 28, 2022, and anti-trans measures in multiple states. Grief in Uvalde. The nation mourned 21 lives lost in a mass shooting at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas, on May 24, 2022. Uh, one of all too many that have occurred since we had a shooting here in Tucson um, on January 8th, 2021. Uh, a shooting whose 10th anniversary has, of course, been overshadowed by uh, the horrors of January 6th, 2021. <laughs> uh, but uh, it did spawn tens and, uh, of millions of mass shootings, all of them being crawled by a uh, heartless NRA, who, which really needs to be defunded more so than, you know, the BBC, or CBC, or any of those other assets the uh, NRA SECA fans would want defunded instead. Uh, they're run by the government. Governments of various countries. Um, end of an era. Anti-abortion activists celebrated and abortion rights groups mourned the U.S. Supreme Court's Dobbs decision June 24, 2022, overturning a landmark case that ensured federal right to abortion for almost 50 years. And uh, I was part of the Larrick camp, uh, who uh, the group that mourned the decision. Here is a... Uh, bearing witnesses, the House Select Committee to investigate the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol began to present some of its findings in televised hearings on January, in June 2022, led by Benny Johnson, a Democrat from Mississippi, and Liz Cheney, a Republican from Wyoming. And, uh, well, I am definitely not a fan of how neoliberals and, um, uh, well, corporate Democrats in general actually managed to warp uh, Cheney, who uh, was a part of a family of war criminals, into silently being a hero just for championing, just for rightfully prosecuting Trump. Uh, in my opinion, that was the only good thing she ever did. In my opinion, prosecuting Trump was the only good thing that um, Liz Cheney ever did. In her entire time in politics. Otherwise, she's just your standard Republican. Uh, and, uh, in fact, all Republicans follow the same script. Some are more vocal about it than others. Which leads me to the thought. Why are neoliberals quick to hate on Bernie Sanders, but quick to love a war criminal like Liz Cheney. Here's uh, Kentonji Brown Jackson was sworn in as uh, the first black woman justice on the U.S. Supreme Court on June 30th, 2022. And the top secret, an FBI search of former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate on August 8, 2022, recovered what appeared to be classified documents. So, it appeared to have at least, uh, thankfully, recovered something from uh, Donald Trump's toilets. Uh... The toilets that Donald Trump flushed a lot of government seat classified documents under into uh, over the years uh, that I know of. <laughs> Here's uh, 
National parks were repeatedly threatened by climate disaster in 2022, including wildfires in Yosemite, and flooding and forced the evacuation of thousands from Yellowstone. Oh, damn. Uh, uh, sausage made uh, the $737 million inflation reduction act signed by President Biden in August 16, 2022. Eventually won support a frequent holdout, Joe Manchin. And here's a picture of uh, Chuck Schubert praying to God that this thing be get, uh, uh, got, be got on with as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Here is a stormy weather. Hurricane Ian made landfall in Florida September 28th, 29th, 2022, causing more than 100 deaths and billions in damages, and causing Governor Ron DeSantis to uh, claim that um, uh, this was uh, that the hurricane itself was a plot by the Democrats to cost him a seat in the midterms. Uh, even though I think it was as apolitical as it gets, the hurricane. And here are some uh, countries of the world. Some time zones. Map of the world. America, I'm right over here. Uh, North America, Caribbean, I'm also over here. South America. Europe. Asia. Africa, which I was just talking about a few seconds ago. Well, a few minutes ago, actually. And Oceania. Now let's go on to science and technology. Oh. Uh, Ice Age Relic. A remarkably well-preserved baby... Woolly Mammoth, dating some 30,000 years ago, was discovered in the Yukon Territory, uh, June 21st, 2022. Look at that. That's something. Uh, Endurance Challenge. Uh, researchers announced on uh, May 29th, 2022, the rediscovery of the uh, wreck of Earl Shackleton's Endurance, last seen in 1915. 9,842 feet below the surface of the Weddell Sea in Antarctic waters. Mm. That's a real undersea treasure for you. Medical Milestone. A team uh, of doctors at the University of Maryland successfully transplanted a pig heart into a human for the first time on January 7, 2022. That's impressive. How did they get the heart? I want to know how they managed to get the heart of a pig and uh, put it into a human being. That's got to be uh, a feat of s some very impressive strengths. Uh, space Images Stun, NASA's first remarkable images from the James Webb Space Telescope on um, uh, uh, released July 12, 2022, showed astounding detail compared to the prior imaging. Here's some sports. L.A. Rams and Super Bowl MVP Cooper Cup <clears throat> won a back and back Ford nail biter over the Cincinnati Bengals 23 to 20 to claim the NFL title February 13, 2022. Low tide. 
Stetson Bennett and the Georgia Bulldogs dethrone the defending uh, champion Alabama Crimson Tide, 33-18, January 20-22, to win the school's first college championship since 1980. Good as gold. Speed skater Aaron Jackson claimed one of the U.S.'s first eight, one of the U.S.'s eight gold medals with victory in the 500 mile at the uh, Winter Olympic Games in Beijing, China, February 13th, 2022. Free Britney. Free Britney, indeed. On uh, WNBA players and fans rallying in support of Phoenix Mercury star center. Brittany Griner, detained by Russia since February 2022. She was recently freed from there. Golden Age. Steph Curry earned his first finals MVP trophy as Golden State won Game 6, 103-90 over the Boston Celtics June 16, 2022, bringing the Warriors their fourth NBA title in eight years. Look how happy he is to score that victory. Uh, goodbye, Goat. In a historic career, in, after a historic career, including 23 Grand Slam singles titles, Serena Williams was eliminated in a third-round U.S. Open match, expected to be her last on September 2nd, 2022. And that's the end of an era for Serena Williams. Avalanche Quiet's Lightning. The uh, Colorado Edge two-time ch defending champion Tampa Bay drew the one June 26, 2022 in Game 6 to win the franchise's third Stanley Cup. And they look... That guy looks just thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> one for the Bucks. Yankee slugger Aaron Judge tied Roger Maurice's American League season home run with his 61st homer September 28, 2022, and surpassed it with number 62 on October 4th. In the arts. Oscar overshadowed. Um, prior to accepting the Best Actor trophy, uh, March 27, 2022, Will Smith stormed the Academy Awards stage and slapped presenter Chris Rock in response to a joke. And, uh, boy, did that spawn a ton of memes. Top that. More than 35 years after the Tom Cruise starring original film debuted, sequel Top Gun Maverick topped the worldwide box office, raking in $1.4 billion by August 31st, 2022. And, uh, no comics gate or Phantom Menace types. Uh, this, uh, the success of this film did not contradict any media narrative whatsoever. Um, actually, I'll go as far as to say that this was quite a comeback year for Paramount Pictures, which released Top Gun Maverick. Uh, they had, I think, eight big-ticket items uh, during 2022, all of which topped the box office, all of which made tons of money. And um, then came Babylon, which was the one and only outlier out of all the big movies that Paramount released this year, and which just came out last week. Uh, Music Man. Multi-instrumentalist and composer John Batiste won five Grammy Awards, including Album of the Year, at the 64th Annual Ceremony on April 3rd, 2022. Look at that. He seems to be so happy on that stage. Um, Queen Bay. Uh, Beyonce performed her Oscar-nominated Be Alive at the ceremonies. Um, uh, March 27, 2022. And topped the charts with the release of Renaissance in July 2022. Hmm. So she's still a force on the charts after... What was it? I think 25 years, which is how long DVD's been around. <laughs> I'll have to look at that again. Let's see how long she's had a career, an uh, active career in show business. And some people of the year. Heavy is the head. 
Following the September 8, 2022 death of Queen Elizabeth II, the UK transitioned from her 7th decade rule to King Charles III era, with days of ceremonies, viewings, and other formal mourning events. Second to none, eight, um, yeah, as in the uh, royal family, uh, then proceeded to have its messiest time since, uh, what was it? Uh, since uh, 1992, or, or uh, really, or since any year, since um, uh, since Princess Diana's un unfortunate death in the car crash. Um, uh, Harry and Meghan went on their U.S. tour, of which one of their stops probably is going to be on an episode of Divorce Court. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> if you uh, follow the royal family, you'll know exactly what I mean by that. <laughs> uh, Amy Schneider won 40 consecutive games on Jeopardy, uh, second longest uh, streaks of all time from November 2021 20, to January 22. And one day, she might be the host of Jeopardy 2. Uh, yeah. Ken Jennings, uh, the Jeopardy champion, is now the host of Jeopardy. <laughs> so, uh, Amy Schneider uh, is probably next in line there. Uh, to succeed him if he dies, and let's hope not. Here's a Benever 3.0. We're calling tabloid headlines of the early aughts. Uh, actors Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez reunited in 2021 and married in Las Vegas, Jan Jan uh, July 20 17, 2022. And no love lost. On January, uh, a jury, June 1st, 2022, awarded actor Johnny Depp $10 million in a highly publicized defamation trial against his ex wife. Her name, of course, being Amber Heard. And here's a farewell to uh, those of us who... Uh, to, to people who died in um, 2022. Madeline Albright, Peter Bedanovich, James Kahn, Guy Lafure, Angela Lansbury, Ray Liotta, Coolio, Joan Didion, Bob Dole, Loretta Lynn, John Madden, Meatloaf... Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, Mikhail Gorbachev, uh, Anne Hagey, Izzy Miyake, never heard of him, uh, Olivia Noon John, Michelle Nichols, Bell Hooks, uh, William Hurt, Naomi Judd, Sidney Potty, and Rice, Bill Russell, Bob, Bob Saget, Vince Scully, uh, Bernard Shaw, uh, Stephen Sondheim, Paul Servino, Ronnie Spector, Andre Leontali, Thick Not Non, Ivana Trump, Desmond Tutu, uh, and Betty White. Of course, the book failed to mention some other notable names who died in during the year, so I figured I might as well name drop them. Uh, well, uh, during the uh, months between uh, November 2021 and November 2022. So, uh, I figured, let, let's drop their names here. Uh, uh, let's see. F.W. de Klerk, who was the last apartheid-era president of South Africa... Vicente Fernandez, uh, who was a Mexican mariachi singer. Italian filmmaker Lena Wermuller.
uh, Rex Coley, uh, Olympic champion for uh, 1964. Monica Vitti, actress from Italy. Ivan Reitman, who you may know for um, being a filmmaker. Gary Brooker. French actor Michel Bouquet. French actor filmmaker Jacques Perrin. Formula One driver Tony Brooks. Instrumental husband Jealous. Uh, Andy White from Yes. Uh, the group that is, Peter Brook, a uh, director for the um, Royal Shakespeare Company in the UK, Wolfgang Pearson, director of Dosh Boot, Never Any Story, Enemy Mine, and In the Line of Fire, among many others, Louise Fletcher of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest fame, French New Wave filmmaker Jean-Luc Godard. Rockabilly artist turned country singer uh, Jerry Lee Lewis. And some deaths from after the book's publication. Irene Cara of fame for the song Fame, inevitably, and um, uh, Flash. Um, flash dance, uh, well, what a feeling. Christy McVie of, uh, fame for, uh, Fleetwood Mac. Bob McGrath of, uh, fame for Sesame Street. J.J. Barnes, uh, a uh, R.B. artist never heard of before. Uh, film and television composer Angelo Battalamenti. Uh, John Hughes, a British-born journalist for the Christian Science Monitor and Deseret News, no relation to the filmmaker. Dino, Dine Dino Donnelly from The Rascals. Shirley Rose Alcard, who wrote Bonnie Raitt's hit uh, Something to Talk About. Rick Anderson from The Tubes. Franco Harris uh, of uh, in the Football Hall of Fame for the Pittsburgh Steelers and Seattle Seahawks. Uh, Ronnie Hillman of fame for the Broncos, Vikings, and the Chargers. Walter Wolfman of Washington, a blues singer and guitarist. Tom Bell, who wrote a lot of, wrote, arranged and produced a lot of Philly Soul classics back in the 70s. Rita Walter, a soap opera star. Dick Flavin, and Dick Flavin, the poet of the Red Sox. Well, that is it for this update. I will see you in the next video. I hope you have a, I hope you had a very ha Merry Christmas, and I hope you will have a very Happy New Year.